Hello everyone. Um, I recognise lots of faces but not everyone's face. So my name is Sarah Rogers. Um, as Ron says, I am based in the Institute for Learning, Innovation and Development at the University of Southampton. And I've been working with many, many staff around the university on a project sponsored by the Co-Vice Chancellor um, for Education, Alex Neal, for Southampton Opportunity. And broadly speaking, this is an initiative that's very interested in engaging students to ensure that they have as many opportunities as possible to develop to their full potential. So we're interested in all the scaffolding we can put around the student experience to enable development and engagement among the students. Now, the whole student champion model very early on that had been developed seemed such a useful one to draw upon <coughs> against that next opportunity more broadly. <coughs> what I've tried to do today is, well, I've tried something a bit different. I provided an infographic today, really, just and I'm going to talk you through that because I think really my role here today is to situate the feedback champions within the bigger picture of what the um, whole champions work is doing at the university at the moment. Um, so this really presents just a snapshot of where we are now. Um, so the Students Champions Initiative um, coordinates teams of students mentored by a senior member of university staff with expertise in a specialist strategic education theme working in partnership with staff and students to enhance the education experience and to encourage greater levels of student engagement. That's quite a mission and quite a mouthful, so <laughs> sorry for that, but in a nutshell, that is what it is. Um, we currently, as it stands, have four different active student champion groups. There's 73 active students as it stands, and the breakdown looks something like this. 8% of them are um, student sustainability champions, 15% are iChamps, 37% are student feedback champs, and the remaining 40% are OVIS champs. So what I've done in the infographic here is just given you a very succinct description of what each of these student groups are about. The important thing to say is that these really started off um, as initiatives started by enthusiasts working alongside my colleague Fiona Harvey, who unfortunately isn't here today, I'm afraid. She's poorly at home, um, so yeah, you've, you've, um, you've just got me today, 50% of the team. Um, but she started off the iChamp model here, which is um, the 11 student iChamps. That's where it all started, really. So if I just scroll down, So what I thought would be helpful to do is to provide a timeline as well as a description. So I'll just talk you through the timeline and then come back to the core activities of each of the different champion groups. So 2013 is when the student champion model was originally developed. So a team of students were recruited to promote digital literacies in the curriculum, working in partnership with academics. So this, this team of students was pulled from a particular module called Living and Learning in the Web. So these students had really specialist academic skills already in social media and how to use it effectively. These students were developed by Fiona Harvey and other colleagues to have a greater understanding of how to apply these methods in education. And then Fiona Harvey, who is our digital literacies queen for the university, she has a very strong network within, among the academic community. So she would, um, with a member of academic staff, talk through what their needs were, what their ideas were, what were the possible solutions around social media and so on. Um, and it's more of a triage rather than, you know, it's a three-person partnership, not just a two-person partnership. So what you have is, in that model, you have Fiona as, um, as the theme lead for that student champion group, liaising with the member of academic staff and the student as well. So the three of them work through what the solutions are and how they might be. I'm just looking around the room, and I think we've got at least one person who has had an iChamp work with them. Scott, have you had someone? I have, yeah. You have? And Judith, have you as well? Um, so you've had experience of Fiona and the student, the three of you working together on, on this. So that was the start of this model, and I think it was Fiona who first suggested to Laurence that this champions model might be an interesting approach to take around feedback. We've obviously been hearing about that a lot today, but the feedback uh, champions, I think, was the second group to come along. So the message I want to get across here is that it's very much a sort of organic growth model to date. Um, so we're into 2014 now, I think, was it March 2014 that Feedback Champs started? Um, around that time, I was having separate discussions with Simon Kemp, a colleague in environmental science who is the king of sustainability. <laughs> um, the university is involved in things like the Student Blackout Challenge, that kind of thing. And we were interested in exploring whether sustainability might be a similar kind of theme which has interdisciplinary relevance, um, where we could 
bring students together with us and look at how that could be applied um, within the curriculum. So Sashchamp Sash started then in um, early 2014. Um, and then Opus Champions is another project. I'll come back to that in a moment. So we're in a situation where we have four different um, student champion groups. And with my border Southampton Opportunity hat on, what I was interested in here is that we have what seems to be successful models working with students and how we can really get the best out of that. So um, what we did in, I'm trying to think when it be, Cameron probably tell me better than probably when the deadline was now, but um, Eleanor Quince and I worked on putting a submission together for the Higher Education Academy Strategic Enterprise Programme, which had um, one of the programmes was around engaging with students in partnership with curriculum and so on. So we thought, well look, maybe we can put something together here about how we as a university can be more strategic in bringing together these different groups of student champions for best effect. So we submitted the application, we we're pleased to say that we were very successful in becoming part of that. And part of what we thought we'd do was um, set up a steering group, which Russell Bentley is here today, chairs. So that group probably meets every couple of months at the moment. So what we're doing there is looking at coming together what, as I say, has been quite a bottom-up kind of approach to student champion work, looking at how we could be much more strategic moving forward. Um, where we are now, 2015, we've got a new group of student champions coming online. Literally, I think the ads are going out, well, if not, I'm just looking for our people, which is still if not this week, then next week, um, for the next group of student champions, which is about enterprise and IP and getting students much more aware of what that means. So that's where we're at with 2015. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about these other student um, champion groups. Um, so the sustainability <coughs> groups then, what have they done today? So we've had six student champions working with Simon Kemp around this area of sustainability. Now rather than just get motoring, working with the academic staff straight off, what that team of students have been doing is really reviewing, reflecting, working through in what way sustainability could possibly be relevant to disciplines which we you know, ordinarily expect it to be. So given that sustainability isn't just about environmental society, sustainability, it's about um, financial sustainability, social sustainability, it touches on things such as well-being and so on. Um, they're really interested in exploring that, that broader dimension to sustainability. The key actions that group has done to date is hold an event earlier this year which had um, 32 students come along, that's what some of the stats are later on, um, 32 students came along to an event um, covering all different faculties. And we are now at a point where we're looking at all the data we got from that workshop to find out from the students themselves where they thought sustainability would work within the curriculum. So um, we'll be reviewing that as we move forward into the next year. The student iChamps model has gone from strength to strength. There's 11 student iChamps at the moment. I think we'd have more if we had capacity for more. Um, would anyone like to share? Oh, I'm going to put people on the spot. Scott, would you like to share your experience just briefly of how you find it helpful to have a student champion working with you? Yeah, so uh, my experience was I've got a student, his name's Ollie, he's a third year medical student and I've been developing lots of electronic resources in medicine and what was really useful to have Ollie come along is not only does he know lots of apps that are out there, he's got he can to be sort of quite intuitive with the stuff that he explores with at home on mobile technology, on laptops, and he can also kind of meet the middle ground between staff and students so he can say, look, you may well have a great idea actually realistically how students work with design one. You know, so he's he's been really good at kind of sort of tailoring my ideas and working together completely equally, you know, so it's not like my idea should see his, but the idea that collaboratively, you know, we, we get the best resource and put our efforts together. And it's not his job really to do all the work either. I think often we get in this kind of supervisory relationship where we see students as uh, somebody who do the work, you know. Uh, it, it, he, he certainly has the skills to develop and he can say to me, look, you know, there's a couple of ideas here for apps that I think would be really useful. Let me go away, explore them, see if they might be quite versatile enough for what you need, and then we kind of get together in a spare lecture theatre and we kind of try and simulate what teaching might be like using it. And so working with him in that capacity is really, really good, and, and he's been inspired to sort of go on and, and try and develop some of the content as well. That's, that's, been, that's been his choice, you know, because he's been, been quite involved in it. Um, 
especially with Fiona not being here, it's nice just to have that, um, that perspective that you can provide. Um, feedback chance, I don't think you need to say much about that. <laughs> You've done a fantastic job for yourselves just telling us all about that. So the APUS Champs is the team of students that I personally have been responsible for leading along with the help of Sophie Farming and sitting in the back of the room very quietly. <laughs> um, so Opus relates specifically to this broader opportunity work that I've been doing, which is about really getting a much greater understanding of the opportunities we currently provide for students for their development at the university. From that, um, being able to draw on where our strengths are as a university, perhaps where our weaknesses are, where we need to do a bit more development. So if you like, a bit of an audit. And that's where we were at the beginning of 2014, 2014 looking ahead thinking, well, how on earth are we going to get a clear understanding of what all these opportunities are for students? Because we don't just want to um, look at all the extracurricular stuff. We want to find out what's going on alongside the curriculum, what's going on within the curriculum, um, and how we can present these to students in a way that um, encourages them to engage with it, things that are at a better level. Um, so the obvious thing was to get our students to work with us to help conduct this audit. And then rather than just have all this information put straight into a database, we thought wouldn't it be great to be able to put it straight into a website so that students can get to see these opportunities for themselves through a searchable database online in a visual way. Um, So I'm not going to go through this in any detail at all, but I just wanted to give you um, just a sight of what this project's been about. It's, in some ways, it's not dissimilar from what you've been doing with your Feedback Champions website, where you've got all of those profiles with a different kind of feedback. Similarly, what this is about is capturing um, profiles of all the opportunities on offer, on offer for our students at the moment. And as I've put in the, step, in the stats further down, you can see, as it stands, we've got 331 opportunities listed within this website pictures we're still working on. It's the beta phase at the moment. We're hoping for a full launch in September. So we're still developing the profiles. But the role the student champions had was fantastic. So then we were lucky enough to have students from all faculties. <coughs> they were co-hosted by the academics in each of the faculties. So Judith was one, I just let me see if there's any other faces of co-hosted faculties. I don't think so I'm not here today. Um, so the student champions had to have a fair amount of you know, tenacity and resilience to get out there, knock on uh, academic stores, find out from them um, what they felt the opportunities were that their modules offered, that their programme offered, that they were offering on the curriculum to the students. And then, so that's a real sort of detective research exercise, working through what might be considered opportunities, and then to do an uh, accurate profile representing what that opportunity has to offer students. So let me see, let's just think of the profile to give you an idea of the kind of work that the students were having to do. So there were several fields that students were asked to provide um, information on. Um, and we've got Anva and Jazz here today who've gone through this whole process of helping us work through um, how to sort of sell these opportunities. So for every opportunity there's a description of what it offers, an interesting fact, what the opportunity offers you in terms of what you get out of it, and then specifically what skills you will gain that will impress employers. Um, we are working with career destinations to have a link from that list directly to their resource to show why those skills matter. And then on the right hand column, there's all the sort of factual need to know stuff that actually becomes really important to a student because without that fundamental stuff, they can't make an informed decision about whether they can undertake that opportunity or not. So, and then there's always the call to action at the bottom. So that was the project really for Opus over the summer 2014 to really gather as many opportunity profiles as we could, get them authorised by the relevant academics or member of professional service, and to also design this website in a way that we felt students would engage with and find useful. So it's still um, an in-development project. Look out for it in September. Any feedback is welcome between now and then. Any ideas of opportunity do you think we might have missed? We'll gratefully receive. Um, I think now I'm going to scroll beyond the timeline. <coughs> some of this key 
data, I just thought I'd put up there for some of the stats associated with it, just so you sort of have a sense of scale of the impact of what's been going on. So I've already given you a description of the sustainability champions earlier. Laurence kindly provided me with some key facts about um, the student feedback champions. So as they've already told us, 100 interviews. It equates to something like 968 hours worked by the team. All eight faculties covered. 10 dissemination events, and you've heard how there's been variable um, attendance at those, but what's great is that you've reached out to all five campuses, although not Malaysia, as you mentioned before. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> and so far, you've got 46 examples of feedback on your website, but that's obviously going to be growing over time. Um, I haven't got many stats there on the student iChamps, other than there's an awful lot going on and I think it would probably warrant an infographic in its own right, so maybe that's the next thing to do. But then for the APIS champions, as I've just shown you, we've got 331 opportunity profiles on our website. It wasn't just the profiles that students were tasked with, tasked with. so each co-host in the faculty was asked if you've got an employability related kind of project that you could benefit from having a student working with you on then go for it, use the students' time to work with you and make that happen. So there's about 11 faculty-focused projects that were achieved over that summer as well. We've had employability programmes, we've had um, work placement reviews, Jazz at Winchester set up a budgeting scheme as well as a blog of opportunities for students that come in at the School of Art. Um, people got really creative actually about how they use that student time to work with them on those projects. So it's been great to see that so much has happened. And I think just from summer 2014, there's something like 4,752 hours that went into, into this work. Um, where we are now with Opus Chance, just so you know, so I've referred to the work that happened in the summer 2014. We've been trialing term time placements with the student champions through semester two, and we'll be having a few four week long placements over the summer and to keep the work going. There are a few academic units that weren't represented in the first round, so we're looking to hit those this summer. Um, Enterprise Champs, I mentioned those earlier. This is the new group of student champions that's just about to get off the ground. Um, what's exciting about the Enterprise Champions, I'd say, is that it's got external funding. So the funding has come direct from the Government's Intellectual Property Office. Um, it was a, um, an award called the um, Studentship Enterprise Award, and the idea is that the um, government's IPO is keen for students to have great understanding of IP as well as the broader enterprise um, side of things. So we thought this was a great chance to use students as change agents in this area, get another student champion team off the ground, so that's where we're at. We're going to be employing eight enterprise champs, as I say the ad's going to go out soon, so we'll be hoping for some good recruits. Um, they will be paid um, um, to go on IPO training sessions, so I'll have the full professional training. There's an IP tutor tool that the government's developed, which these students will be able to use um, as a resource to help develop the broader student community, and £24,000 is the amount of funding that, that we've had for that. So, um, I hope that's given you a bit of a picture, really, of where we are to date with student champions. I thought it might be useful to just list some of the benefits. So, okay, we're doing all this stuff, this is what's happening, it all sounds great, but really what does it mean on the ground? Why have student champions? What are the benefits to, to the university community as a whole? I think ultimately, what we hope to have is more engaged students as a result of having student champions. I think that's the bottom line. With student champions, you have a greater reach than you have as an individual member of staff hoping to implement change and innovation, so they provide that greater reach. So if it was just, let's say, Fiona alone trying to promote digital literacies, there's a lot of work for one person. As soon as she's got a team of 11 student iChamps working with her, your reach is suddenly that bit greater. Um, you get the local discipline perspective, and I think this is what Scott was referring to there. You know, he's got a student from the course that understands the nature of the discipline and the studies and can help you work through in a practical way what kind of resources are right for you. Um, you get immediate student feedback, so that's why it's particular, this model works particularly well with you of the theme of today. So as and when you're developing the ideas, you've got the students there with you, working it through, you've got that conversation, you've got that dialogue happening right at the point of development, not once you've launched this thing and you have no idea how it's going to be perceived by the students. And I think off the back of that, potentially, if the students know that's how it's been developed, Perhaps they give you a little bit more license if you're being creative, perhaps it gives a bit more credibility, a bit more understanding. Um, 
Okay, there's potential for greater rates or, or pace of change as well. Um, so with the Opus project, I think we're probably at least a year ahead of where we would have been had we not had students working with us. I mean, I don't know how long it would have taken us to get to the point of 331 profiles had we not had students working with us and what they were able to bring to it. It's a genuine partnership approach. We're all learning together. So much of this stuff is experimental, it's new, it's innovative. And so it's great to, to have it in that um, partnership model, really. And as Scott was saying, it's not about the student doing everything for the academic. It really is about doing it together and working it through together. Um, something that's come about with the Student Champion Network that's really exciting is that within each champion theme, of course, you have the interdisciplinarity that comes from the different um, disciplines represented. But once you get the network of student champions working alongside each other, then it gets really rich because you've got students working across disciplines, across themes. And I think looking ahead, what's something we're looking to do is perhaps bring together students from a particular faculty, but across different themes, so that they have a particular you know, approach that they can, they can take as a group in a discipline level, working perhaps with associate deans education to be able to do things a bit more strategically in that respect. Um, it enhances the culture of the university in that it breaks down traditional barriers. You've got a more collegiate approach. Um, it's like mentoring one another, really. We've all got something to give. And it's also good value. So we have to pay students to do this work. It's appropriate to pay them their giving us <coughs> their time. It's a professional um, experience that they're getting. For as many of the schemes as possible now, we are using the University Excel Placement Programme in order to um, employ the students. This helps with affordability, so it gets match funded by the university. And, and in many cases, it's through Education Enhancement Funds anyway, so the funding is coming from the university direct. But there is a set pot within the Excel Placement Programme that's designated to support the appointment of internal or posted placements. So it helps with the affordability. It also professionalises the roles and it streamlines the admin. So when the iChance model was first established, the appointment was done through using Tempbank. So the onus was on the, um, the project lead to go through all of the admin processes associated with that and just make sure the timesheets were completed and so on. And I think Lawrence, you'll probably still work that way, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Which is time consuming and, and tricky. Um, but at least once it's through the system with the Excel placement program, it does make it a much more streamlined pro process from an HR perspective. Now, as with all good things, there are challenges, and I would say that <laughs> from um, the mentoring or, or leadership role within the student championship teams, I would say it really isn't easy. There are a few things that make it quite tricky. A key one I found particularly with, with Sophie, I think this um, through um, term time champion placements, is the fact that you have to really work hard with the students to help them to help themselves in terms of their time management. I think they really do struggle when they've got all of their academic studies to deal with, as well as the sort of developmental kind of work. You know, it's not like these hours I'm going to be working in a shop and I can just designate that time. A lot of this stuff is developmental. It's a bit, ad it can be a bit ad hoc. It's around the edges. And I think um, sometimes that's difficult for students to manage. I think our experience is that the vacation placements would work best for us with Opus. Um, but that's not to say the um, term time rules don't have a place, and I think we just need to look at a bit more of a mixed approach, I would say, for us rather than one or the other. Keeping track of where a student is at, keeping track of where the academic is happy, ensuring that the champions have developed the skills they need in order to be effective, and also helping them to um, reflect on their development. All of these things take time, and also managing expectations. Um, but that's not to say it's not rewarding, of course. It's fantastically rewarding, I'd say. Um, seeing how empowered students become through this experience, seeing what they're equipped to do, um, to do, to see their sense of achievement, to see that they can affect change themselves and really make a difference and have an impact. I was um, fortunate enough to go along to the presentation that Jazz did at Winchester School of Art at the end of the summer, and the pride that the academic staff had with the work that she had done over that summer and what she'd achieved and um, your plans for the future of what we could do was really wonderful to see. Um, now, future student champions, it's great now that we have the steering group to help look at the strategic direction of all these groups. We're looking at drawing together as much as we can um, models of best practice, sharing of experiences, um, 
we need to do more around measuring and evaluating impact, and that's where being part of the Higher Education Academy Strategic Enhancement Programme is being brilliant, because you have so much to offer in that area. Um, and also to keep tabs on the new champion themes that are emerging. You know, people are coming forward all the time with ideas of potential um, student champion themes. Um, and the other thing to say is just because we have all of these particular themes at the moment, we don't foresee that these are going to carry on forever. I think there will be a time when some themes will need to be phased out and other, other themes will come forward and that will be exciting to see. And the final thing I want to say is Student champions are only one part of the big picture of student partnership work at the University of Southampton. There is so much going on at the moment. It's really an exciting time. Not only do we have the more traditional course representative forms of student partnership working, we've also got an expanding student XL, <coughs> XL um, Southampton scheme, the placement scheme that we're using with student champions, but there are endless examples of students being employed through that scheme to work within academic units and specific projects, many around education, which is really exciting. We've got the student consultancy model now, which has run through career destinations, which was launched originally in humanities, which is where you have student, teams of students from across many different disciplines, and they can be in her, internally hosted placements as well, not just externally hosted. So we've got interesting activity happening in that area. Of course, there are student society consultancy projects happening within the university, as well as um, things like student buddying and student ambassador work, where we've just got students who really are playing a pivotal role in um, the culture and sense of community of the university, and I think there's a lot more we can do to really capitalise on that and um, yeah, exciting times. I'm aware that was a bit of a whistle stop tour. Any questions? Student community and making best use of that. So I think 